Hi, this is Yastru and Manos Berlakis, and this is case 126 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of a left main trifurcation percutaneous coronary intervention with hemodynamic support. The patient was an elderly woman with multiple comorbidities that developed a perioperative myocardial infarction as well as ventrilo tachycardia and was found to have an ejection fraction of 40 to 45 percent. She was referred for coronary angiography that demonstrated a heavily calcified and severely diseased left main all the way from the ostium to the distal trifurcation along with some disease in the distal circumflex. Right heart catheterization showed normal hemodynamics. The patient was referred for a potential coronary bypass graft surgery but because of her comorbidities, as well as severe bilateral carotid stenosis, she was turned down for bypass and was referred for high-risk PCI. These are the steps of PCI, the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention, with the steps of particular importance to left main PCI being highlighted. It is important to plan the case carefully, to monitor the patient throughout the case, as left main disease can lead to hemodynamic compromise. Be careful with engagement, and this can cause pressure dampening and hemodynamic compromise. Ensure that the left main is well covered. In this case, we decided to wire all three, all three vessels to minimize the risk of losing one of them. Because of heavy calcification, it is important to adequately prepare the lesion, potentially using a therectomy before placing stents. The standing technique we will discuss in a second. It is mandatory to use imaging in such cases, both because it's a left main and because there is significant calcification. And there is a question of hemodynamic support in a patient with unprotected left main and decreased ejection fraction. When it comes to bifurcation standing technique, there are two key strategies, either a provisional or a planned two-stand strategy. In this case, we decided to go for provisional because there did not appear to be significant disease in the ostia of the LAD circumflex and ramus. And uh, of course, there is always the option of putting a second stand if uh, there is a compromise of the side branch which are wired before placing the stand. How about hemodynamic support? This is the algorithm discussed in video 14.1. This is a case that has high risk of PCI, but the baseline hemodynamics are normal. And in most cases like this, we use standby support as the patients are often doing well. However, in this particular case, we decide to use prophylactic hemodynamic support because we're concerned for the complexity of the lesion given the severe calcification. So we decided to use hemodynamic support with an Impella CP device. We placed the Impella CP through the right common femoral axis. However, after we inserted the Impella seat in the right femoral artery, there was um, no undergrade flow to the limb. That can cause ischemia. We had a consultation with our vascular surgery team. The eventual plan was to use the repositioning seat. So we took away the peel-away seat, put the repositioning seat, which is slightly smaller, 13 instead of 14 francs. And after doing that, we actually did have undergrade flow to the limb. We then wired all three vessels. Again, we wanted to make sure we preserve all three vessels. And then, and then did kissing balloon inflations in all three vessels. We were then able to deliver an intravascular ultrasound that uh, uh, demonstrated uh, some diffuse disease. As we come closer to the ostium, there is the trifurcation. And now here is the left main. So there is some calcification, but it is about 180 degrees. So it's not circumferential. And because of that, we decided to actually not uh, do a therectomy as we had initially thought about doing. As mentioned before, we did not see significant disease at the ostia of the three major vessels, LAD, 
ramus and circumflex, and as a result, we decided to use provisional stenting. We stand it into the LAD that seemed to be the bigger vessel and used multiple projections to ensure that the stent was covering the ostium of the left main. This is something critical for all ostia lesions. If the ostium is uncovered, that can lead to restenosis. If there is too much stent prolapse, that can be a problem as well. So you don't want to miss the ostium. At the same time, you don't want to have excessive overhang on the stent into the aorta. And you want to make sure before you place the stand that the lesion is well prepared and that the stand is going to expand. So the stand was placed. We then did the proximal optimization technique with a 4.5 millimeter balloon in the left main, and then standed a, a lesion more distal in the LAD with a 3.0 millimeter drag eluting stand. We then did intravascular ultrasound again with the calcification, osteal disease, left main disease. Imaging is critical. What we found is that there was some disease distally. The LAD stand was not well expanded, so needed a more aggressive post dilatation. And then here is the left main that uh, actually seems to be expanded okay, although it does have an oval shape. And then we found that the stand was nicely protruding into the aorta, so we had clearly adequately covered the ostium of the left main. We thought about doing pressure wire in the LAD and the circumflex to ensure we did not have significant lesion in the um, ramus as well as the circumflex. However, there was good flow. We didn't see any lesion. The pressure wire could not be delivered. We ended up not doing that plan. We did additional post dilatation of the left main with the 5.0 millimeter NC balloon and then the osteal flush to facilitate subsequent re-engagement of the lesion. And then uh, um, we found uh, on the repeat intravascular ultrasound that the left main was expanded well. Potentially, we could have uh, gone at even higher pressures to try to expand it even more. But actually, the area was adequate and the ostium was well covered as well, even though the shape of the vessel was more oval. and would it have adequate coverage of the ostium. The patient remained stable through the, proce through the procedure. We then removed the impeller. Uh, we had placed two perclose sutures prior to inserting the impeller sheath, and then those were tightened. We had a contralateral injection showing good hemostasis. And this was the final result. We have good flow from the left main into the LAD, ramus, and circumflex, and the patient did well. So several lessons from this case. The first one has to do with the use of hemodynamic support. Perhaps it was not absolutely necessary in this case. Things work very well. But because we did have significant osteo left main disease and severe calcification and trifurcation, we decided to use it, even though the baseline hemodynamics were normal. Second, we did have uh, no undergrade flow to the leg when the impeller seat was placed. In this case, the solution was to remove the peel away seat and insert the repositioning seat, which is slightly smaller, and this allowed undergrade flow to the limb. Third, when you have significant calcification, it is important to prepare the vessel well before stenting. In this case, the arc of calcium was 180 degrees, therefore we did not use atherectomy. And then we did use imaging that showed good stent expansion at the end. We did cover the ostium of the left main, as confirmed by intravascular ultrasound. We did use the provisional standing technique. We standed into the LAD, gelling the other two vessels, which did not seem to have significant disease. One can do pressure wire to assess those vessels, which we could not deliver in this particular case, but there was no angiographic significant disease at the ostium of those vessels. Thank you.